Greeting everyone and welcome back to John and Roman Solve the World's Problems. <laughs> that is a lie. We absolutely need to change the title of the show, but that's okay. Um, so with me this week, as always, is John, the creative blue collar guy. We have Unbearable 73, Mark Darren, Stephen Ransom, and Brandon, the anime guy, could not be here this week. He is on the road, so he is missing part three of our one part uh, saga. So it, it's fine. So we, But he did send me his picks for this week, uh, so I will pull the, or, uh, discuss those when the time comes. How is everybody doing this week? Okay, -ish. <laughs> that about sums it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing good. It's cooler in in Los Angeles, thank God. It's 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 around eighty, thank goodness. Oh, well, Not as piercing as it used to be. No, it's Only it's 80. dreadful down here right now. But you know that's that's okay. It's all part of the experience. Um, so immediately following this broadcast, John and I are going to be jumping over onto Zax's channel for the Arnold Extravaganza. That's going to be a lot of fun, and we're looking forward to that. So hanging out with us in the chat right now, I see Rosie Gamgee. Thank you for showing up tonight, hey, Rosie. Hey. Nosferatu the Vampire. You Cheers. Sultan of the Undead, you. Um, and then I think that's uh, kind of all of the other, at least is in the chat right now. So thanks for showing up, guys. It's always good to see you. So um, I don't really have, I'm not going to do like news uh, right now, just because we actually need to get through the stream this week uh, <laughs> and we can spend 30 minutes talking about other. So no, I real, apologize real for the, the format change. God damn real it. Quick, not to cut you off, but it uh, looks like uh, Brandon is actually here for a moment. Oh, is he? Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's down there. Okay. Oops. Nope. Nope. Wrong mouse. Uh when I don't know how to control the things on my desk. Okay, there's Brandon. All right, well, there you go. Right, hey, Brandon. Hey, guys. Oh I apologize for the maybe kind of good signal, maybe kind of bad. But uh, Clearly, I'll you're on the road. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm at a place called Cherry Hill. It's a very nice uh, water park. But man, oh, man, I am crispy as a bug and worn out. But uh, I figure... I figure since I've got uh, the ultra wide 5G bandwidth, where exactly where I'm sitting, it should be good enough to go through my five real quick, and I'll make them very yeah, quick. burn through them, brother. So, okay, Sonic one and two because they're great. They establish a brand new, a brand a whole new world, and I love Sega. I want Sega to have their own movie universe. They have a ton of games that they could make movies out of that would be just awesome you know 80s awesome 90s awesome the potentials there oh uh, let's see top gun maverick that's a no-brainer because it's top gun maverick and it was awesome the northman because that is it is everything right with indie cinema if you have a budget uh what else did i say uh, oh yeah spider-man no way home because the rest of them just suck <laughs> and Spider-Man Spider-Man's a good movie. That one that one was really done well. I saw it in theaters three times. I typically don't go more than once, so that's uh that's a big one. And then even though I know it wasn't originally made in this decade, it was remade, remastered, upgraded graphics and everything and that is Star Trek the motion picture, the director's cut. I dare anyone to fight me on that cuz that is a excellent top-notch stellar movie the director's cut is the original cut is terrible the director's <laughs> cut is great and with Them's all the words. updated i don't graphics, think i've ever seen the director's cut well, i actually like the original version that. i know i'm one of the four people who like that but that's yeah well, you need uh, to, like, but now, now i need to find that yes you well it had been exclusive to paramount plus the the 4k remaster but supposedly they are supposed to be doing a physical release of it all right so on. if you can get it get it because i i watched it uh, in 4k and holy crap so good so so good so oh, why have we not heard anything life. about this remaster yeah, yeah I didn't they've either. been working on they've been working on 4k remasters of all of them and they've uh they've had them all i think up to four out on paramount plus 
See, I don't have Paramount Plus uh, because I hate them for, well, for a myriad of reasons. But Star Trek is not one of those reasons. Except yeah, for Paramount's you know, very schizophrenic with with their is, stuff. You know, you know they, Discovery and they have Picard great Star Trek Trish and Wars. they have the what the hell Star Trek. So yes, well, that's that's old Star Trek versus new Trek, and that's the you yeah. know, the, the dichotomy of the universe. Well, real Star Trek versus the faux Trek or the the new Trek or the, uh, the would Abrams, that be JJ Kurtz Star Feck? Um, yeah, that was a bad joke. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm very <laughs> hot. It's playing with my mind. Yeah, um. it's hot as it's hot as it's hot as hell. I definitely get it. So those are them, and with that, I my phone is burning through battery, so I got to take off, guys. All right, have well, a great stream, hi, Brandon. And enjoy. Thank you, Brandon. It was enjoy, Brandon. Awesome, you dropping Thanks by, you brother. Have fun me. out there, and I agree with your choices. Except I've never seen Sonic, so I can't tell. I can't comment on it. <laughs> well, it's just a fun movie. It really was just a fun. I'm not a very Plus, fun person, so. Well, the big thing is not Paramount wrong. listened to the fans. The original yes. Sonic they were going to go with was that an I absolute remember. abomination. So they made it right and made it look like how Sonic is supposed to look. And then with the second movie, Tails, Knuckles, awesome. So the next one, Sonic 3, is going to have Shadow Sonic. So that's going to be really, really good. So, All right, guys. I got to I gotta go. Take care. Take care. Bye, brothers. Cheers. Thanks for dropping by. Later. Well, good. And it's true what he said. Uh, everybody that. that I've seen review those two Sonic movies that was a fan mm -hmm. was completely on board with the changes. They were really, really happy with the way Paramount reacted to the fandom. Nobody got rubbed the wrong way. Everything that came out, people were pretty much like, this is good. This is this is good for a live action version mm -hmm. of the character. We're, mm -hmm. we're fairly impressed. I, I mean, that was the reviews that I saw. So, yeah. Definitely yeah, a good saw, top five. I saw the first one, and and at first I was kind of weirded out about how, like, okay, Jim Carrey is supposed to be, like, the main villain, and he didn't look anything like the guy from the video game. But they they threw it in at the very end, so they're totally lining it up for sequels and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I, I got to agree. I haven't seen the second one yet, but I thought in terms of making a, a live-action movie off of a video game, they did it pretty good. It was a hell of a lot better than the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, give you I, I can't comment on any Sonic. of these things. Oh God, it was <laughs> so bad. Sonic, it was it was okay. Uh, it didn't really grab me. I thought it was somewhat somewhat generic, but it was a, a decent translation of Sonic. Uh, I have mixed feelings about what they did with Sonic. I think it it's good that they listened to the fans and they made them better because that was horrible. The original version. Yeah. The other side <laughs> of that sword is uh, what what fans can demand of filmmakers now which is a weird uh, thing it people can have their their vision compromised by fan outrage which is not necessarily good not the way it's supposed to be but, <laughs> well no but, but in this is, case but, I mean, that's, that original sonic was okay like, oh, your ugh. job your job making a film called sonic is not to make your artistic version of sonic is to make something those people who played that video game for decades are saying wait this is like this is like an adaptation of what we love you know yeah. like, just That's like I don't know War of the Rings, you know, not to make yeah, your totally version of it. And I mean, when you're yeah. making Sonic, and I mean, unless you're going out on a limb and really presenting an artistic version of it, which that yeah, wasn't, <laughs> that was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you totally well, that's right. what they did with uh, Halo. Halo was not Halo. No, Halo right. was. It, it had looked a like guy Halo. Master Chief in it, but it yeah, but it yeah, it looked like Halo. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it it clearly was not Halo. Right. So, all right, let's, uh, we'll get moving here. So, uh, and, and just like we discussed, we were talking about this in the green room before, uh, we're going to have a lot of overlap on these uh, films because it's impossible, I think, not to. Um, although I do suspect that uh, Matt is going to have some peculiar choices because <laughs> Matt goes, Matt goes deep. He goes under the skin, through the bone, into the marrow, and that's what you get. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to burn through these um, yeah, reasonably quickly. So uh, I liked No Way Home uh, a lot. It was my favorite of the the new Spider-Man films. Um, I like the nostalgia bait. I thought it was fun. It was in, and like I said, of the three movies, I enjoyed it the most. And uh, John and I actually, this is, we actually met, I think. Did we meet at this one? 
Yes, we uh, did. I mean, I, I I think we had connected through like social media. Yeah, in social was, media, but we, it, we it met was, in the real it world. It was like my first. <laughs> it was my first big meetup because it was the nerd rotic like goodbye yeah. California meetup where I met a bunch. Yeah, of people yeah, we were hanging out with Gary and uh, and uh, uh, you, McKenna, Max, McKenna, and Max. all of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. <clears throat> So anyway, and I, I love William Defoe in this. I thought he yes. was just so much fun. He was he was kind of the standout for me of this movie. Um, and then the Spider-Man's and now the Green Knight. Again, this is one that I maybe a lot of people didn't see. Nope. I thought it was a brilliant movie. I loved the color palette. Uh, of mostly mostly greens and grays with the the oranges as accents um in the world seems big and i i just i just thought it was a, a a beautiful movie it's an ethereum story there is some clear modifications for this version that was okay uh jrr tolkien probably wrote the best of the uh translations um, so if you if you're looking for a, a a proper version of it, that would be it. But I thought the film was a lot of fun, and I don't know if anybody even saw this other than, than me in, in this group. Yeah, the, the, um, next, once again, the, the reviews that I saw, everybody was saying very, very positive things about it, if only that anybody bothered to make an artistically interpreted film on that scale for a Hollywood audience. Mm -hmm. I think that was like the big come away was that the Green Knight was at least something of a curiosity and well constructed and well executed. So, yeah, definitely a good choice. And then something I think most of us probably saw was the new version of Dune. Mm -hmm. I even mm -hmm. liked Zandaya in this, which is really odd. Uh, <laughs> I overall, I just enjoyed the casting. I thought the casting was very good. I like Josh Brolin in it, even Jason Momoa for his limited role in it. Although Jason Momoa pretty much always plays Jason Momoa, and that that was okay. It, it worked in context here. I thought the kid uh, whose name I don't remember right now, uh, Paul. What's that? Paul. Paul. No, no, yeah, but I don't remember the kid who played Paul Trace. Oh, uh, yeah. the little fella. You did not around. do your homework. I, I didn't do my homework. Um, I drink a lot, and it's really hot. So you're getting you're getting the condensed version of this. So you drink and you don't know things. <laughs> so it's yes, it's the opposite of uh, <laughs> Tyrion. Oscar Isaac actually got a part in this, which was which was pretty good. He he, and it's Oscar Isaac gets a lot of crap parts. Don't know why. I mean, he was in uh, Ex Machina. Oh, which Steve, I Stephen was Grant. Great. Uh, yes, Steve. Don't get me started on Moon Knight. This yeah, how I feel about Moon Knight, and oh, this can all end right now. That could be a whole other conversation. That, that's that is. That's right. when the table gets flipped over and all the action figures fall over. Moon Knight, <laughs> fucking Moon Knight. Anyway, so yeah. I okay. uh, the only yeah, thing, everybody the only forgets thing. that that uh, Oscar Isaac is actually a very talented actor. Uh, the problem is, is that he allowed himself to be a part yep. of the entire Star Wars universe by saying one thing to J.J. Abrams, don't kill me. And hmm. the funny thing is, I bet you he wishes he had a time machine. He could go back and change that because good well, grief, man. Well, and then let's also not forget that he was the like god awful version of Apocalypse in that X-Men movie. Oh, yeah, so, that too. Like you're saying he is he's a very talented actor who accepts a lot of shit roles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For yeah. good money, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But, that, but you're compromised because then when you see the name Oscar Isaac, you're like, eh, yeah. is it going to be all right? Yeah. Is it going to be? Is it going to be Star Wars? What yeah, the hell was yeah. his name? What was the name of his character in Star Wars? Uh, oh, Dameron. Oh, Dameron. Oh, Dameron. Po, po, forgettable. And, yeah. Forgettable. Well, he's one of the characters that was kind of worth following. I mean, as bad yeah. as I'm not going to say Episode Seven was bad because that people delude themselves with people now say in retrospect it was horrible blah, blah, blah. it was an okay movie it was eight and nine that were god forsaken mm. garbage yeah yeah and yeah my but son would ignore everyone except for poe and finn like so that what was that leaves you 10 minutes of footage in each film <laughs> like, you know you're okay <laughs> yeah see that's why that topic is so good roman yeah. defending the position yeah. you have on a film <laughs> that most people say mm. is good Mm -hmm. But you say is bad, and defending your position on why it's bad, and I that's an we, we're probably discussion. gonna gonna look at that uh, next Thursday. Uh, Stephen, mm. Stephen threw that at me because I was kind of going back for ideas for for next week, 
Mm-hmm. And then he, I was like, yeah, that actually is, but I can do that all day because I, I tend to be contrary on some, not all movies. Uh, although Mrs. of the Empire would probably disagree based on the, the movies that we like together. Hmm. Although um, you also give me a lot of shit for movies that I haven't seen, but then there's a lot of movies. You just that... haven't seen them, which yeah. I blows my mind. You still but haven't seen The Road Warrior. How is I that even haven't. possible? You, you well, don't even get a man card until you've seen The Road Warrior. <laughs> See, it's not just me. But can, can I just throw in at least one quick fun fact about Dune before we kind of move forward, though, is that yeah, actually... Dune was the reason why Hans Zimmer did not do the film score on Tenet. I know, Christopher Nolan nerd over here. Um, Hans Zimmer has done the score for almost every single Christopher Nolan movie, with the exception of a handful here and there. But it was like his lifelong dream to score a Dune movie. And so when that was offered to him, and then Christopher Nolan came and said, hey, I'm working on this movie Tenet. He's like, nah, bro, I'm busy. (laughs) Whatever, yeah, and I'll bet you that that definitely lent to the uh, the awkwardness of that movie. Tenet was because mm. Zimmer didn't have a hand in it. Um, I actually he brings I a lot to the table. When I saw Tenet in theater, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. I thought, like, I automatically assumed that he had done the score, and whoever he got, I I forget off the top of my head, but it sounded like on par with like uh, Inception and Interstellar and some of his other movies. So it. it I, I thought having seen the movie, he pulled it off, but it was interesting to go back afterwards and find out that it actually wasn't Hans Zimmer because he was busy scoring Dune. Yeah. Um, well, I saw Dune and I didn't see Tenet, so um, <coughs> it's okay. You can be wrong. Speak to it. Uh, <laughs> I just, here's the thing about Tenet: it's not that I think it's probably a bad movie. It's just that I don't care. Um, That's fair. It, there was nothing. <laughs> It, well, it came out during that period when, you know, everything was had gone to, what's the word I'm looking for? Shit, I believe would be mm. the word. And so it just wasn't on my list of things to do. And then I, I just, I will probably see it at some point, but I just, it just hasn't, I haven't cared to see it. Um, I'm glad they split doing up into two parts. Uh, the My only concern with it was they didn't know if they were going to make the other half. Yeah. Um, they, that was a big hanging, you know, Chad. Yeah. It's like, are we going to do this? Don't know. Uh, yeah. so I'm glad that they did. And I, oh, and I love, uh, Stellan Skarsgård as, uh, Baron Harkonnen. He is, he's, is, he's good. And he's one of those actors who's good in pretty much every movie he's in. And yeah. I loved this version of Baron Harkonnen so much. I didn't like the 1984 Dune and I'm going to throw that out there just right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hear you on that one. It was it was made made too soon. They didn't have the tech to make it look good, and it didn't look good. Um, what? Oops, uh, John, John, do you hate Mel Gibson? <laughs> no, I don't hate Mel Gibson. Do you hate America, John? Is that the way we're doing this? Um, He's not second. even American. Wait. Hold on a second now. here. He is is Zach's is Zach's interfering with the timing on this show? <laughs> Are, is he trying to create an accident where we can't get his guests lined up for his six o'clock show? Is that what you're trying to do here, Zach's? Pull Zach's, Zach's throwing out hand grenades. <laughs> All right, moving on. Moving on, and then there's young, and young, young Paul Atreides, and again, this kid did a great job. And uh, okay, fine. That's it's artsy. It's weird. I loved it. And this, not everybody liked this movie. Um, I and John is often wrong, and it, we we tell him when he is. Uh, I thought this was a really good movie. People say, yeah, it's really good because it's 2020, and I and I don't, I, 2022. I thought it was good. Or whatever the I fuck year it. it is. But I thought it was just a good movie. Um, I love the, the, I mean, it's based the story that brought you Hamlet brought you this movie. And this is the, you know, that, that baseline story of Hamlet. And I love the revenge bits. Uh, there just, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot about the Northman. I didn't like, I love the way it was shot. I like the weird stuff. Uh, Roger Edgers is a, is a, is a good director. He gave you the lighthouse. He's going to be giving you Nosferatu. I'm talking to you. He's going to be doing a Nosferatu hmm. film with Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. And I am I'm mildly aroused at that prospect. I'm not going to lie. Ooh, it boy, sounds I want to keep that fucking to fantastic. Um, 
that might be the heat talking. I don't know. Who knows? Know. Nobody knows. I mean, um, this and, movie was essentially 300, but with Vikings instead of Spartans. Like, it was just like all of that evil, toxic masculinity that the world needs that just like makes you want to like leave the movie theater and go like kill something and like, cook it over a campfire. <laughs> So, so Nosferatu, he likes it, but he doesn't like it as much as the lighthouse. And I can, mm. I can, I can, I can, I can be okay with that. I'm losing my, yeah, exactly. I am, I am just, this, <laughs> this is going to be so good. Um, and ironically, William Defoe played uh, the, oh, what was his name? Max Shrek. We, we talked about this a little bit in Shadow of the Vampire. So it's just yeah. kind of a, kind of a strange journey, which I think is pretty much anything William Defoe does. Yeah. And then the last one is absolutely a surprise to no one. It would be Top Gun. Right. Uh, I, and this is, I, I mean, I'm going to save my opinion about the original Top Gun because we could use that next week. Uh, hmm. I, but I really liked this movie. <laughs> and I like this for all the reasons that I didn't like the first one. Uh, Tom Cruise matured a lot for this role and he, he plays an older Mavic. He doesn't try to play it as, you know, he's still 20 years old. Uh, now, there are some nitpicks I can have just from a military perspective on this, and that's not a big deal. Uh, the overall story was just fun. It was a fun movie. I liked the messaging. Um, like I said, I can I can get past the, the nitpicky stuff, but it was just cool to see these characters. And it you know what it had? Oddly enough, a diverse cast. You know what it didn't do? beat you among you know about the head and mouth to let you know that it had a diverse cast yeah and they did a great job with it and i didn't have to deal with most of the shitty soundtrack that the first movie had which also made me like it a lot more so and like i said i know that that said this one was not a surprise to anyone but um i still really really enjoyed the movie i actually went to it uh two times at the theater which for me at this point in my life is is quite an outing so that's that's my my top. So um I John, love that Tom no, Cruise ahead. is finally jowling. You notice that his, <laughs> his <laughs> cheeks are fine. Yes, just yeah. starting to fall. We can now be convinced that he's not a vampire, he's not an yes, immortal. The, the, the not portrait convinced. in his closet is finally uh catching up with him. Yep. Mm, that Scientology still keeps him pretty young though. I, I don't I, yeah. I I don't I don't even know what they do over there. I it's it's all you know the the what's who wrote G, the he wrote oh, all those yes. books. Oh Ron Hubbard. L. Oh Ron Hubbard. Hubbard. Yes. Uh who I I and ironically I've not read an L. Ron Hubbard book. You'll find that surprising. All I'm sure. So uh John, why don't you uh jump in, do your thing here? Oh boy. Uh let's see if I can share my you have, can you share here. Hold on. Oh, and uh, gentlemen, you could hold me off till last. I only have one film on my list, so <laughs> let's get through the other gentleman uh, first, so that we don't have a timing issue. Copy. What the John? What did there you we go. do? There we go. Now try again. I'm working with it. The there giant. we go. Ta -da! Obviously, it's our. It's already been mentioned, but like I said, I've. Uh, I'm one who's largely kind of given up on the entertainment industry, so um, I don't have very. I don't really have any deep cuts. I haven't seen a lot of movies in the last couple of years. So Spider-Man, uh, bringing the three Spider-Men together was actually kind of fun. Uh, again, we can say all we want about Marvel and whatever, but um, like I said, Roman and I saw it in the theater with the big nerd erotic meetup. And it was kind of fun to see like all the different moments throughout the movie when everyone was like cheering and applauding. And uh, But it was also good because it was largely a Sony vehicle and not so much a Marvel vehicle. Um, but anyway, so that's obviously already mm -hmm. been talked about, but there's that. Um, no surprise the Christopher Nolan fan in the room but again also I was having a hard time trying to pick movies that have come out in the last couple of years that I've actually seen which is not many um, Tenet uh, maybe not Christopher Nolan's greatest movie but I appreciated the fact that while he very much holds true to the fact that he thinks it, um he films all of his movies in IMAX, so he believes that his movies are meant to be seen in a theater. So when Warner Brothers told him, oh, no, we're going to go to all uh, streaming at home, blah, 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 whatever, he kind of gave him the middle finger and said, no, you're going to release my movie in theaters. And, and they did. And other people in Hollywood 
chastise him and whatever. But um, Tenant, another great movie that uh, I did see in theaters. And then was that a the Tomorrow War? Did okay, bring yeah. A cat to the chap. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's like it's one of those things where maybe it wasn't necessarily like the greatest movie, my favorite movie, whatever. But I do love Chris Pratt. And I actually I'm getting to the point where I actually really enjoy watching how much other people hate Chris Pratt because he's just like the most normal, neutral person on everything. They assume a lot of things about him, about political and this and that and whatever. And he just he takes his movies, whether they're good or bad. He's just kind of whatever. I'll do Parks and Rec. OK, I'll do Guardians of the Galaxy. But People hate him so much that it actually kind of makes me want to support him more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I love. I actually love this movie. It, I mean, it just, it, the effects it, were not fantastic, but the story yeah. itself, I I enjoyed. I thought it was. I thought it was weird and good, and I like both of those things. The yeah, story was what I heard too. But, um, yeah, the story was interesting, awful. but what it was? It was what like an Amazon Prime original it was, something it was like that. Amazon like it's, movie. It's, but so it's was, not going to so be was the Terminal List, which I also yeah, love. It, it's not going to be like some great like mega blockbuster if it's. Amazon Prime original, but um, like I said, I I like Chris Pratt. I enjoy his movies, good or bad. I still have not seen the most recent Jurassic World. I think I'm going to wait until it's like free to watch because I already know that's going to be a turd. Not because of Chris Pratt though. To watch it. Not because of Chris Pratt though. (laughs) It's all the other bullshit. Um, again, maybe a little controversial. I actually enjoyed both of the Venom movies. Yeah, me Um, too. They're, yeah, maybe they're kind of campy. Not everyone loves Tom Hardy. I'm looking at you, Roman. Um, <laughs> but overall, I mean, <laughs> in, in the grand scheme of things, like I'm, I'm not going into a Venom movie expecting like Scorsese or something. Like I kind of know what I'm getting into. I know what I'm going to watch. <laughs> it was at, at the end of it, I was entertained. I, yeah, and, and, there was, and everybody there was no that the comic books weren't really that much different. Yeah. than what we got in the movies. I mean, the, the yeah. comic books back then no. were a little silly, they were a little campy, and they were a little over the top, almost tongue-in-cheek like Deadpool. So, yeah, well, and, I, and, I and the you. whole, like, inner dialogue between Eddie and Venom, and, like, no one else can hear Venom, but he's, like, talking to himself, or at least <laughs> it seems like he's talking to himself because he's talking to Venom, and it was, you know, whatever. I at, at the end of the movie, I was entertained, and there was no like weird agenda attached to it. And I just thought, right. oh, it's like the good old days where they can just make a movie, whether the movie was good or bad. Like I didn't feel like there was some like weird agenda being like pushed on me. It was just <laughs> okay, whatever. It's a movie. It's entertaining. It's all right. Yeah. I can't, I and the last first... one that I have I to really defend. Time. What's that? So I enjoyed the first movie. It's the first Venom was kind of a guilty pleasure. It. It wasn't great, but it's fun, and I liked it. The, the second one, I had a lot of issues with. Uh, it just yeah. the character motivations in that were so weird that I, I couldn't, it, I couldn't sit, get, get a, I couldn't connect with it. Right. Yeah, I mean, the second one was a little more strange, the whole like Woody Harrelson thing and stuff. But still, like, like I said, I get at the yeah. end, it's maybe not the I'm, greatest movie in the world, but I was entertained. Like, <laughs> and I'm not a Woody Harrelson fan either. So oh, that, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like I said, I think the one that I probably have to really defend, I hate defending anything Disney, but Disney, Pixar, whatever. Uh, Soul, I actually really enjoyed. I really thought it was I enjoyed Soul movie. a lot. Soul was fun. Um, Soul was good. As, as a musician myself who I, I'm a musician by hobby and by just free time for fun, I work in a machine shop during the day that I feel like is sucking my soul out of me every single day. So this story of this guy who he just wants to be a musician, he just wants to play gigs and he's a teacher and he gets the job and doesn't really love the job, but it's like that pays the bills and that like that one, like the story Again, we're coming back to it's not about the special effects. It's not about the agenda. The story kind of really resonated with me in my life of like, I'm working a job that I hate because it pays the bills. I have the thing that I enjoy doing that will probably never be a full time income. And it just, so I, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really well made, but um, it, it's Disney. So it is what it is. And <laughs> yeah. No, I and, and but I you're you're right. I like this movie. I thought the, the I thought it was fun, and I thought actually the message in the movie was very positive. Yeah, yeah it's a good movie. <clears throat> so those are my five. Oh. Right on. Nice. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to hit this button. I'm going to see what happens. The John <laughs> Spear. Oh, okay. So, oh, good. I'm still here. Was that the goal? <laughs> In some sometimes uh, it, it is the goal, and sometimes I fail. But it, although yeah. there was the time that you dropped out of your own stream, that's yep. true. That's true. We've remedied all of these problems. <laughs> Our it's a paternal are, kind of love. Are less. Um. All right, Matt, hit us with the weird shit. Okay. Well, there's only one. It's not so much weird, but I'll share the screen so you can see see what it looks like. Uh, at least the art in it. Um, I kind of alluded to what this was last week when I, t when I talked about Song of the Sea. Uh, this is another um, animated film, if I could find the window. There we go. So uh, the movie is called Wolf Walkers. Uh, I, I have it shared. Oh, here it is. If you want to pop up the anime. Uh, oh, that's Mark. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, this is from the same cartoon saloon ah. that Song of the Sea is from. It's another Irish. Uh, the cat's helping me a lot. <laughs> it's another Irish folk tale about um, people who can speak to wolves and things like that. Hmm. It, it, it again, uh, the reason I don't like Pixar films is not because they're, they're bad stories; it's because the animation style just doesn't work with me, like mentally. Mm -hmm. So I, it has to be really kind of like inhuman, abstract like this, or it has to be full on anime. There's no in between for me with animation. <laughs> so. Uh, and this 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 it's not quite as perfect as Song of the Sea was. It's a story of um, uh, two little girls, one who is a child of a wolf walker and one who's a child of a guy who lives in the village, and they have a problem where uh, the the wolf walker girl's mother, who is Maeve, has gone missing. And and, and I'm not going to describe the whole plot to you. It has amazing music. It actually, has better music than Song of the Sea. Um, there, if you want to watch. There's a, a musical artist, uh, it's called Running With The Wolves that they use in this. If we can do it without, um, if we could p play one minute of that without you getting copyright struck, I would sell everyone watching this on that movie. Because <laughs> that's I found it by accident. That's what led me to all of these uh, uh, cartoon saloon films. You know, So I won't go keep going on and on about it. I don't want to want a Zach's induced time limit, despite his what? Zach sabotage. <laughs> you know? What was you know, that? There was another film about the Crusades, right, or about the well, no, plague there's period. Two more, is... There's two more. There's two more films they have out so far. The, another one, is, the third one, is called The Secret of the Kells. It's not. It's another Irish folklore tale. Right. Not okay. quite as good as this, but it's still pretty good. And then the one I haven't seen yet, which I have, it's called um, uh, what the hell was it called? It's about the, the Taliban. The time of the when the Taliban ran Afghanistan, and his little girl's father is taken away, and she has to kind of pretend to be a boy to support her family. Okay, uh, they're all they're all sad tales. There's no yeah. they, they have endings that aren't necessarily That's not that sad. a beat, man. Well, they're 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 like that yeah. the Irish sense of you know everything's a little tragic type of thing. Oh, that's right. true. Yeah, you know, right. that's but, why they drink. Yeah, but this is this film will remain on my top list of this decade if I'm alive in 2050 to go over this list. You know, that's how good this film is. So after nice. that, we'll go on to the uh, other stuff. You mentioned Dune Part 1. I was expecting Dune Part 1 to be utterly horrible, okay? But it turns out I've become a Denny Villeneuve fan for um, unknowingly for years because of other films he'd done that I liked. We talked about some last week. Uh, I think you had one or two of them, uh, Roman. Uh, in any case, um, so he, he did great respect to this. Uh, I read Dune when I was uh, four. It was like the fifth or sixth book I ever read. As a kid, I've read the only books I've read more than Dune are The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Silmarillion. I mean, you should get an idea of where. So, Dune, right. like maybe 15 or 20 times I've read in my life. Um, yeah, and, it's upper tier. That book series is upper tier, at least well, the original well, Dune, Herbert. Dune the and Dune Herbert. Messiah are upper tier. After yeah. Dune Messiah, he, uh, Herbert goes a little off into his own um, craziness with some of the stuff that happens there. Yeah. Know? But, uh, but anyway. Uh, I know we're out of time, so I want uh, just to give no, you. No, 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 you're, you're fine. You're fine. We're, we're yeah, no, we we're got, doing good. We, we got we're, we're only thirty five minutes, in. Yeah. and okay. we got a little we got a little sludge time on the end. So okay, right. so in regard to Doom Part One, there's some flaws in it. Like uh, I was really impressed because uh, okay, the book has been around for decades, and the movie came out like what last year. So if this is a spoiler for you. I'm sorry, but <laughs> there's a point in the film when in the book in the film when Duncan Idaho dies. Okay. And one of the flaws of the book was he kind of died kind of pointlessly, almost off camera, if you remember the book, mm -hmm. if you read it. Mm -hmm. And when they did this, I was like, oh, they're going to make his death more meaningful 
in in the book in, in the movie an actual improvement by having have it in a slightly different place. And then they go to it, and then it's like they make it meaningless again because the, he didn't have to do any of that for them to get away. You know what I mean? If you remember the sequence in the film, they could have went in that yeah. corner to begin with. Yeah, you know, he didn't have to, he, he, his death would have been cool if it were a running fight in the corridor for them to get away. That would have been really cool, you know. But anyway, but otherwise it was a really good adaptation, even with the changes. And to people complaining about the race swapping or whatever, uh, to give you the history of Dune in 20 seconds, it takes place about 30,000 <laughs> years in the future from 1979. Right. Humanity has been bred like pets so that none of our current <laughs> exists at that point in the future. You right. can make the everyone in Dune to be green, and it wouldn't because those are none of our, spe our ethnicities or races. They don't even remember what the earth is like. A, they're not even sure the earth really existed at the time of Dune to give you an idea of how much has changed. Okay. Yeah, I would go so, so far as to say that, that Arrakis might actually be earth. Um, for it can't really because of uh. Stuff in the novel about the science of it, but I don't want to go like geek out and you know, right, right, yeah. Um, but so the point I'm getting at is so if they make the Fremen more Middle Eastern looking or whatever, I mean, they're technically supposed to be a blend of everyone, but I, I, had, they, I had zero problem yeah, with that, yeah. So there's no, you know, uh, it was a great, it was great. And I hope if he, if he nails Dune Part Two, um, yeah, then this is this will be on that list of the best of the decade. It'll I'll control I, one film. I also I love the ships in this, Matt. I love that yeah. they actually the representation yeah, of the ships. Was was so so good. It was things were much closer to the book version of it. Yeah. Although, as much as Lynch changed in the eighty four version, there were a couple of things he actually like three or four things he actually did better than any version since. But that could be a whole other discussion. We right. talk more about it because Vince's weird vision caught onto some stuff that Herbert wrote in the book that no one has since caught with. You know. But anyway, so we go on to the list. Um, my next film I'm bringing up, um, Kong Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, all these, uh. Legendary MonsterVerse films have been good, not great, but this one at least was the best one to minimize the human element and have more of the kaiju <laughs> fights and um, and the end fights with the fights with. I mean, Godzilla on Kong on on the on the water was probably the best monster movie fight I have, and I've seen over a thousand kaiju films. Okay, um, you, I've got Godzilla all over my apartment. Okay. I, I, I even hunted down like North Korean kaiju films that people have been releasing like through like military smuggling out of the country. And, <laughs> you know, the, the, the fight on the water with the ships and all in Godzilla versus Kong was amazing. Like it's one of the top five kaiju fights of all time, you know. And then the end fight, and they, they made Mecha Godzilla badass like he was in, in the Showa series where Godzilla's had a struggle. Uh, uh, like in one film, he had to use special superpowers, and the other one, he needed help. That Mecha Godzilla is supposed to be badass, unlike the the, the the Heisei films where, well, then again, that was Super Godzilla who could, was going to blow the planet up. So you kind of get the explanation there. Um, let me go on here. So we we, we talked about the Northmen. Um, for those who don't know, if, hopefully my camera's not going to reverse it. You guys see it here. Uh, this is the book it comes from. Well, the, there's two literary sources for it. Okay, there's this, which is the history of the Danish people, and which is written by Saxo Grammaticus in like the 14th or 15th century. This is the third oldest extant copy of anything recording Norse um, Norse mythology, so to speak. Uh, hmm. um, there's another source, uh, less detailed than some some sort of um, Latin church documentation of old tales. But and and if you ever don't want to read the whole thing, it's in chapters three and four of this that Amos gets mentioned. Uh, as far as the film goes, it was really good. I thought I if I didn't love the stuff and knew the story. The middle of the film would have been me more kind of glancing at it than because it was very the pacing was just horrible. And there's something about modern directors when they make TV shows and movies, like they don't understand good pacing anymore. Either they do too much of that chop, 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 chop pacing, or they don't understand it. You're not gonna sit there and just like like I'm watching a spoon. I'm just if nothing happens to the spoon, <laughs> I'm gonna look away. You know? Like like the it needs to be a little more energy. I'm not saying more action sequences, but Maybe more moving around, or maybe more other people walking into the scene, or something. That middle of the film was very slow, but it was very. The end was great, and the beginning was great. And there's a tie in there. Um, if you know how they do those cut scenes where they say where they're going, and in the first cut scene they say they're going to where the, the people called the Rus were. Okay, so there's another. Uh, if you ever heard of Michael Crichton, he wrote a book called Eaters of the Dead, which became Thirteenth oh, yeah. Warrior. Yeah. That's based on an actual document recorded document 
by a, a Middle Eastern scholar in the ninth or tenth century, who uh, Ahmad bin Falnad, Falnad, who was sent by the Emir of uh, uh, Iraq or Saudi, one of the two, to because Islam was spraying that way, so he wanted to have a, a, a Islamic scholar teach the people the right way. So while he went there, he witnessed a Viking funeral where they actually execute, like burn someone alive on the ship. He witnessed Viking wars and things like that, and wrote in detail about them. And he was a Middle Eastern person who actually interact in a real way interacted with Viking people. I like the fake ways they keep putting in these films, you know, uh, you know. That, that, so, and the place that Amoth was going to was the same place that Ahmad bin Falad Falnad went to. So I think that was a deliberate tie-in. I there. did not know that. You know, yep. I think that was. I love tie-in. Michael Crichton for that very reason. I don't. Yeah. I don't know who, and I would even go openly to say what. Michael Crichton is. If you look at his his uh, his bio his uh, bibliography, oh, yeah, and Andromeda Strain Man, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. This guy wrote some outstanding pieces of contemporary science fiction, and I don't know, he came out of nowhere and just dominated the field he entered. I, I mean, how many films? Not since Philip K. Dick has so many of a, a person's works been a- a- adapted to film successfully but yeah. like andromeda strain um jurassic park uh, you, you think about what these projects were and what they were talking about and you're just like who the hell was this guy i mean <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean you know, i mean like andromeda strain reads like reference. a technical manual <clears throat> but you can understand it as a lay person i mean i was a little kid when i read it so i didn't even know all the science stuff i knew Right, right. But it explores some very deep yeah. subjects and gets into them so wholeheartedly that yeah. you're just like, was this guy on a government project or uh-huh. what? I mean, seriously. Well, he was a doctor. He was a medical doctor. You hate right. Yeah. yeah. So and, and um, that, well, that's what was... makes Dune so good, too, is that yeah. he was in that field of, uh, you know, uh, animal research where like he, yeah. he discusses the anatomy of the worms. He understands yeah. their 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 structure and how that all functions in biology and such. So yeah, yeah. Yep. So um, my my next film is kind of a little bit of a cheat because due to it came out like between Christmas and the first week of January. Like it, it like technically in the U.S. it might have come out like Christmas Day, but in England it came out in like um, New Year's Day. So I'm counting it for 2020. Uh, it, it's a war film called 1917. Uh, Sam Mendes directed it and produced it. Uh, it's That's a really a fantastic movie. Yeah. I mean, again, it could be critical. There's a little bit of a weird part, like maybe 20 minutes in the middle. That's a little kind of pacing is a little off. And I thought he did something a little stupid. One of the characters that didn't, it took me out of the realism of it, but it's fantastic. It, it's a great war movie and people, people, more people should watch it. And my last one. Um, so when this film was coming out, it was, a, it was almost a revenge film in a sense, by the creator 2016 was. <laughs> uh, so Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, when I watched it, it was a little slow at first, but I kind of liked it. And as the film got more and more on, I started to love it more and more. And the ending of the film sold me. Uh, it may not be on the top five list ten, by the end of the decade, but it's worth watching, especially if you love the original Ghostbusters and that pure homage they did to it in the film. And then like with the way they, you know, again, spoilers, but you know, it's been two years or whatever. Um, you know, the way they use CGI to bring him back to life for that one scene and a blue and an actual blue because he was a ghost, he came back as a ghost, so they ghosted him in there, you know. I mean, it was just such a fun, like, like respectful continuation. And um, if they don't ever do a sequel to it, if they do, you know, as long as same people do it, it could work, you know. I hope they don't. Well, I mean, I, 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 I would love them to leave that alone yeah. now. I would die. too. Yeah, I would they too. Just announced the release date of the next Ghostbusters. I know, and it yeah. really <laughs> hurt my soul when I saw it. I was like, "God damn it!" And we did it like it was the, John. I, or we yeah. had talked about it at the beginning of one of our other shows, but it was very distressing to me. But everybody so, loves Paul Rudd, so you know. Like, yeah. But if, if a Reitman Jr. or whatever his grandson, whoever did the film, controls oh, it, his son Jason. Yeah, if if he does it in the same respectful way, and continues. And I could be okay with it. I mean, I trust that he he proved himself that he deserves a shot to do a sequel. You know, like some people do is do a movie oh. now, and you don't ever want to see them do a movie again. Yeah. I, th- I I worry it's going to be the bridge too far, and then I <laughs> and the problem is it'll make me not like the first movie if it what? if it if it's tied in 
and it's crap and it's the same director, I'll be like, oh, fuck. No, but see, it can't do that to me because the past is immutable to me. You know, like like once <laughs> it's established, I, I can ignore Star Wars 7, 8, and 9 Oh, really, eight and nine, and oh, and most of these uh, shows, you know, the 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 oh, Obi Wan show, um, and whatnot, to and still enjoy the episode, you know, the OT, even the PT a little bit, and and Rogue One and all, and all that, and so I I don't let the future ruin my past, you know. So anyway, those are my uh, five. There we go. Those were good. Those were good. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, both of, I mean, I, I like the Ghostbusters film a lot, and I like 1917 because it's a, it's a weird. I mean, it's for most of the film, it is a one shot, which I thought yeah, was okay. just amazing, yeah. uh, just remarkable filmmaking. All right, so down to my buddy Mark Darren. Cool. And his cat. I will. <laughs> I will continue <laughs> with the the discussion of uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife because that is on my list. And uh, I I did really like that movie. It uh, on on subsequent watches, it has a little bit of diminishing returns, but I still think it's a, a fun movie to watch. And, and watching it, I f I almost feel like that movie was meant as a series and got cut down. Yeah. There's so many little things that are just touched on. And yeah. the beginning of the film, it, 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 you had that odd opening screen, which didn't make out the ghost core. Yeah, um, and you're like, what the what the hell is that? And then it, and then it goes to the normal intro stuff. Uh, and a lot so of the you're, character you're right. arcs are just so minimized in there; they don't really do much. But it felt like the seeds were in there to have large character arcs to develop mm -hmm. character relationships. They just didn't go anywhere. So we'll see if that <laughs> goes in the next movie. <laughs> or if that's just done. Oh, dear Morbius, no, Morbius. No. Ah, Morbius. Okay. <laughs> well, speaking of that. They're releasing Rogue One in the theaters for Andor, so maybe that'll be the best Star Wars film of the decade. There we go. That actually <laughs> was one of the better ones of the recent. I liked Star it Wars as a movies. movie, but I'm already having such trepidation about Andor. I, I have yet to recover from my Obi Wan. This. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, you do this to yourself, <laughs> Roman. I know, I know, I know. I, I kind of like some of Obi Wan. <laughs> and it's, it's been good having Mark with you us. You shall not pass. <laughs> Not all of it. There were parts. Uh, all right, I'll move on. <laughs> um, Spider-Man: No Way Home. That was an yes. enjoy. It was fun. It yeah. uh, it was unique because it doesn't really stand as a, a movie on its own. You really have to have the history to understand it, which helped it in a lot of ways because they had all those villains, they had all those heroes, and they didn't have to spend time trying to write yes. complete arcs for all of them which that would have been a nightmare like, having to explain all of that again they had all these villains in spider-man 3 and they tried to give everyone a beginning a middle and end and all the arcs and it just ruined the pacing and ruined everything they didn't have to do that in this you knew who they were and they just gave you they gave you a punch they gave you a, a satisfaction that came from those previous arcs and they did it in a, in a really fun way. So it was as cool as really unique filmmaking in that way that I haven't really seen other places. And it was still fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm going to say that one for last. Uh, <laughs> next on my list, everything, everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. Heard of that. That was, that was just a lot of fun. Had a nice kind of uplifting message to it. Uh, I like the way I that they that filmed one. that on a budget and still made it a, a really cool, fun film. Um, I, I think it's a high recommendation for anybody who wants to sit down with their family because yeah. it is such a strong family film, especially if you have daughters. <laughs> I think it's an extremely strong family film in that way. So, yeah, yeah. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. Yes. Although there is the butt plug scene. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you, wanna, you gotta have that conversation whoa, eventually. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this got so weird so fast. Well, that's the movie. <laughs> well, I need another beer. You know, you, th you think you're in control of the stream, then suddenly, you know, <laughs> plug. <laughs> what can you say? That's what you need movie clips is, for. That's the movie. Good <laughs> wholesome movie. family film with some butt plugs in it. <laughs> Sweet. Well, it's been fun, everybody. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, second to last, well, not um, it's not an order, but uh, the Suicide Squad, James Gunn version oh, of the Suicide Squad. I, I like, yeah. I enjoyed that film a lot. Mm, That's yeah, just it was fun. better than I, the I first really one. Like, I like yeah. Weasel. Yeah. Weasel style. made the movie for me. Weasel was fun. I like what James Gunn did. I, I like his his style of filmmaking. Although I yeah. I did not really like uh, Guardians two. Um, that one felt a little. I, I don't know. There was too many pop culture references that weren't grounded in in Star Lord uh, canon. Right. They, they came from other places. That's the weird aliens who played video games. That's the war. It just everybody had the pop culture references. It wasn't just coming from some Star Lord. And mm. the Yondu storyline felt really forced to me, and I could see it coming a mile away. Uh, but anyway, Suicide Squad. Fun. I can, I can, Giant I can, I can, I can concede that. Uh, Stallone is as the hmm. King Shark was a oh. was King Shark. Yeah, yeah he was. He was, he was King Shark. Yeah, he was yeah, King okay. Shark. <laughs> I couldn't remember if that was the right name, but that was, it was. Fun. Well, it wasn't Vin Diesel. It was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, and I, I, I like that Stallone last. was tapped again. That that James Gunn decided to bring Stallone on for this movie yeah. as mm-hmm. well, yeah. because. He brought some serious gravitas to the two beats that he was in Guardians 2. <laughs> yeah. I mean, True. when he yelled at Yondu, it, you took it for real. I mean, it was believable, <laughs> believable enough that the that the um that the, the the funeral at the end actually brought some tears to a lot of people's eyes mm-hmm. that Yondu finally got made good and that mm-hmm. Stallone respected him for it. So, you know, that's his, not easy to funeral. do in a cameo, you know. It's yeah, so I'm sure. glad that that Stallone was brought back in uh, in uh, Suicide Squad. I thought yeah. he was good. Cool. And even Peter Picald, uh, Peter Capaldi had a, uh, a a very small role in it, which which I love because I like Peter Capaldi a lot <laughs> as Doctor Who. Yeah, my my problem with the Suicide Squad is that I just like them from the comic books, so I didn't the movie doesn't uh, interest me. Right, you know? right, yeah. right. So. Fair enough. I ha- it's been a long time since I've been in the comics. <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I'm, I'm more in the movie crowd than I am the comic crowd. Mm-hmm. I just ordered Sandman um, Volume One because of Wakashishi's Tea House. Uh, so Gray, you're going to be costing me money over the next several months. <laughs> All right, I'll wrap it up with uh, <laughs> my my stranger pick. Uh, and if any of you have small children, I apologize. <laughs> Oh, Encanto. I, <laughs> I thought Encanto was delightful. It was just a, oh, oh, I didn't see this. I didn't. I did not see this. Your your children might not be small enough for it, but uh, <laughs> if you do have small children, you've heard the soundtrack eight million times. <laughs> um, but it's a fun soundtrack. I think the soundtrack was fun. I thought the movie was was very charming. Uh, we don't talk about Bruno. One of the handful of movies that I actually watched in the last couple of years. So that gets the, the fifth spot on my list. I, I, I can't comment on it because I, I, I know it exists, but I, I, I only know it exists that much. Like a lot of people don't know what Soul is um, because it, it came, it, well, I think in Canto actually went to theaters where Soul was direct to Soul uh, was Disney direct Plus. to, uh, yeah. it was straight to streaming, yeah. So I think in Canto was in theaters <laughs> and it was streaming at the same time, one of those deals. Okay, yeah. got it. All right, those were those were good. Uh, some of them were weird, and that's what this is all about. <laughs> that's right. what we're doing. Very little overlap. I'm surprised that there's this, there's I, as little was, overlap. We got, we got like Spider Man and the Northmen more than really anything else, uh, which and Dune. good, good, and Dune. But we can right. man, we could talk about Dune all effing night because we're nerds and that's the, that's what we do. Yeah, and it's only been two and a half years. I mean, it really it's dog? only been two and a half years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, yeah, the, yeah but in, when you count those in woke years, it's been seventy four thousand years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good heavens, ain't that the truth? Although, did you guys see that leak about uh, you and McGregor spilled as to what happened to Obi Wan? Doomcock was talking about it. That apparently it was originally supposed to be about him saving Luke, mm-hmm. which would have made, yeah. which would have actually made sense. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but yeah. they had to yeah. cock it up. Yeah. All right, Stephen, on to you. Um, yeah, in the uh, in the Twitter DM, 
the group Twitter DM, there's a, a, a poster image and a trailer. Every, trailer. Every, every, about time, a, every time I get tasked with this kind of thing, I, I usually do something horribly, horribly wrong. Is well, it's in the it's in our it's in it's in the group chat? This is where he's oh, gonna okay. like accidentally okay. end the stream yes, earlier. It's, in the group chat. <laughs> it's been nice being on with you boys tonight. Uh all right, let's let's see what happens here. And the stream's over. <laughs> My kid. Uh okay. oh R R R. Haven't seen that yet. No, I've heard good things about that as well. I mean, a girl who leaped through time and uh summer wars. Yeah. So it, it's uh yeah, and both of those films are or well, the whole catalog is highly recommended. But it's got that studio ghibli, you know. Now, where um, can I where can I find like both you and Matt had movies that I have no idea where where to fuck to find them. So where where do I find these movies? You know, if you do a Google search, usually they recommend where to view it. Oh, okay, got it. Um, yeah, if for, you for, just for, search these it are definitely as a title. Kind of movies. Well, I would I would recommend um for like buying the original Blu-ray media if if you really but then again some people don't like I mean then again I, you know if you don't some people don't want to buy until they've at least seen it so uh there may be other ways to see it if you hit me up later I'll put it that way okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got it but I need all I, right if you like and I really want this film this company uh uh cartoon saloon to get more money because so if people go buy it because I want more stuff from them I very rarely like you know, I'm like, okay, I want to see a little more of this. I, I want, before I die, I see at least three or four more films come out by this company. Because it's, right. it's such an amazing, like, like I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like going back and watching, um, I haven't really gotten, at, like, most of the animation I, I enjoy is stuff from older years ago. This is the first kind of, like, as an adult level animation, like, that I'm really enthused with everything the company is producing. You know? Cool. You're talking about the animation on your list. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I yeah. agree with you. That studio has been just knocking it out of the park. Every piece that yeah. they've done yep. has reached critical acclaim, certainly high critical reviews. Mm -hmm. um, it's solid, super flat 2D animation, you know, yep. and the storytelling is interesting. Phenomenal. And when you do uh, serious topics like that, adult level topics like that with childlike animation, Mm -hmm. There's a tone that's reached that that makes something very unique, and uh, it trans it it, tr it it translates past what its initial audience was supposed to be, because it becomes serious more serious than its own original concept, even because it's like, whoa, what did I just watch? There was such strong themes in there. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what grabbed me for the pieces I saw. Mm -hmm. Yep, these were all. Fun choices tonight. Um, and like I said, I got to wrap her up right now. But sure. uh, I appreciate everybody being on tonight and spending uh, spending your time with us. And thank you, chat. I'm pointing to you like you're over there for being here tonight and uh, hanging out in the Zach's pre-show, as we like to call it. Uh, and this, this was a fun topic. And things we have coming up, uh, Stephen and I, I think next Thursday, we're going to be talking about movies you love that we hate and uh down the road i want to do a show uh best film adaptations of novels not to include lord of the rings because mm. right that would be everybody's top so yeah um so we'll go mm -hmm. around just real fast uh john uh what do you got uh still just kind of cranking out my little short videos here and there throughout the week and then we've got our thing on monday i believe our uh, topic coming up this monday for mixtape mondays will be bands that have a ridiculous but successful gimmick example kiss <clears throat> nice okay, that's I'm, I'm you, you can, to look up you can laugh at them you can make fun you can yeah, laugh at them you can make fun of them but they're selling out arenas and yeah. i'm not so they're doing it they're successful <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter how ridiculous is they're making five money. years old man all right matt what do you got going uh, on brother i just dropped a video on the uh purchase of the saul Ga saul zans uh middle earth enterprises or learning rights by that embracer group i just did drop the video on that um Still going to try to get a couple other videos out, you know, by over the weekend. You know, things I've been talking about, just Hawk the Slayer reviews and all that I want to do. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it right now. Right on, right on. All right, Mark, what do you what's going on over in your world? 
Nick Bounty Kickstarter store running for another couple of weeks. Probably got, it's got 12, 13 days left on it. It's doing really well, but keep it going. Right on, right on. What's the cat got going on? Meow. <laughs> with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> all right steven what do you have uh my usual uh thing I, i'm actually very prominent here now uh which is really great and um after the uh ff uh si uh panel that was put together for uh, uh for all mankind uh i had a long chat with uh some of the oh, gentlemen good. involved in that channel and you may be seeing more of me under that banner. Certainly, I, I may be, be doing some American. cheerleading. <laughs> I may be doing some cheerleading on their behalf. He, he definitely talked to me about it. We haven't nailed anything down yet, awesome. but I may be joining that family. So Excellent. we'll keep our ears peeled, and I'll certainly inform nice. you guys as soon as possible. Cool. That Yeah, that's a fun group. That's the UK group I work with generally on Wednesdays and Saturday, though not this Saturday because uh, – the main the main channel is is uh, going to be on vacation. So yeah, Archer um, and I were <clears> having some interesting topic kick arounds. Uh, oh, Colin, Colin's a good dude. Yeah, he's he's got a brain like this big. Yeah, so I can tell. Um, all right, we are going to close this out. Um, if you're with us now, please hop over to Zax's channel because we're going to be doing the Arnold Extravaganza, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is going to be both weird and fun. So uh, please go over and visit Zach's. And for everyone else, again, thank you, panel, for being here. This was this was a, a good time, has been for the last three weeks, and, and I appreciate uh, everybody being able to be here and Brandon, the anime guy, for hopping on when he was able to. So uh, for now, this is John and Roman Solve the World's Problems, which is a lie. Signing off, be kind.